When creating wavetables, there's a few important workflow considerations. First of all, do you work dry or wet? Remember, dry means no effects, no unison, no processing, but wet could be with some or even lots of processing. Now, personally, I prefer to work dry for two reasons. First of all, it's much easier to hear what you're creating when there's no effects. But secondly, if you can make a wavetable sound good dry, then it will only sound better when you then add effects. For example, take a look at this preset I created. There's some unison, some distortion through the filter, and some reverb, all of which does improve the sound, but if I turn everything off, it still sounds good. I'm not relying on the effects. It's almost like the effects complete the sound. And so when you're working dry, you do have to keep this in mind. You have to sometimes almost imagine what it will sound like once you have added effects. It doesn't take too long to get used to this, and I personally recommend it simply because you can hear more details dry. Furthermore, when creating wavetables, usually you want to be modulating wavetable position to hear how it sounds when you're moving through it. After all, it is wavetable synthesis. Most of the interest comes from this wavetable position modulation. And there are three main ways to do this. First of all, and probably the most standard using an LFO like I have here, noting it's in trigger mode, so it starts from the beginning every time. Moving through linearly at a speed determined by rate. Alternatively, I could use an envelope. Noting to move both ways, you need to add an attack. And then the third main way, something Steve introduced because I personally asked for it. Moving through using the mod wheel. Note this only works when the wavetable editor is open. Which can sometimes be useful, but not always. And so, in general, most people, including me, use an LFO. Now, very, very importantly, different modulation speeds and even different modulation accelerations give different tonalities, different sounds. If I modulated this table at about, say, an eighth division, it sounds completely different. Some wavetables only work modulated slow, whereas other wavetables only work modulated fast. In general, complicated wavetables tend to work best modulated slow, but simpler wavetables with maybe fewer cycles, these tend to be best modulated, or at least can be modulated fast. As I say, even the acceleration, the modulation acceleration can make or break a wavetable. For example, because I created this wavetable by linearly slicing the sample up in time, this only sounds natural if I modulate linearly. For example, if I tried using a sine wave, it simply doesn't work. Because if I want this horn to sound real, I need the harmonics to fade away in a way consistent with real life. And so if I slice up the sample linearly, I need to therefore modulate linearly. And finally, it's important to note there are different types of wavetables, and oftentimes it tends to work best to know, possibly at least, which type you want to create. For example, you may want to create single cycle wavetables, 
such as these analog single cycles I created where I will not be modulating wavetable position. Alternatively, I could create a subtly varying wavetable. Take a look at oscillator A here. Much more subtle than say the first example of a much more obviously modulated wavetable. And then the final style, something a bit more on the experimental sound effect end of things. You could have wavetables that don't sound like any normal sort of sound. You can see this one's very unusual. Thanks for watching.